We are live on Facebook and happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday live. Such a pleasure having, um, having you back joining us this morning. And Jordana, hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Lucas. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Happy Sunday. Oh, this is going to be such an exciting Sunday. We are going to talk about dreams. I mean, dreams that we dream during the night, not dreams as in goals and wishes and desires, dreams as in nightmares and daydreams and altered states of mind, actually. And I am so excited because I love this theme. How about you? <laughs> I, you know, for so long, I, I had very, I have very specific dreams and when they come, they, it's like we're talking about today, they radically changed my life drastically. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm excited to hear what you think and dreams for so long. I thought people have my wife, she remembers dreams every night. She wakes up. I had the craziest dreams. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know where I was in the middle of the night, but I didn't have anything. It was like, mm -hmm. I shut off and shut on except when I do have these dreams and whew, they're big messages. Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of us uh, are too tired to dream because mm -hmm. you need to be in an altered state of mind in order to dream. I think we all dream, but we are so tired that we don't remember the dreams when we wake up in the morning. Uh, I have periods in my life where I remember vividly everything that I dream about. Mm -hmm. Then there can be weeks and I think, why am I not dreaming? I think that I am dreaming or I know that I'm dreaming, but I just can't remember it. Also, I've noticed that when it is closing to full moon, I dream more. Interesting. And I asked my husband about this and he says it's the same thing. It's kind of weird because when we wake up and I say, oh my God, I've had so many dreams this night. I can't remember it's one single dream, but I know that I've had a lot of dreams. And he says, me too. And it, it's like we are synchronized in this dreaming. So it's almost like it's a, it's depending on something outside of us. I know it sounds weird, but that's how it feels when, when you're close to another human being and you can, you can see a pattern in this. And I can absolutely see a pattern where when there is a full moon, I dream more. And so does he, mm. we don't remember anything. <laughs> and, and I think that there is something to this, but I don't know exactly what it's about. I mean, of course, dreams are a part of our reality and everything in this reality is energy. So they're as real as this reality. It's a question of how we label dreams. If we label dreams as something lucid, something that isn't there, something that is only in our minds, of course, that might seem like an impossible mission to remember and classify and understand. But I think that dreams are actually altered states of mind where we are communicating to our, with our highest self without the barriers, you know, the, the social constructs and, and the psychological barriers that we put up and the belief systems and everything that is going on in our real world. So without these barriers, we are communicating to our higher self. It's just that the higher self is not talking it's not using words, it uses images and feelings and scenarios, and that's how it talks to us. And I think that is a, a, an area which we need much more um, scientific research to understand how we are communicating with ourselves, because I think we're talking with our unconscious mind while yes. we're dreaming. Yes, I mean, for me, it's been, my dreams have paralleled my physical conscious journey of my days yes you know whether i was a child in that always being attacked always being afraid and then i would have these recurring dreams and i remember i was in college and they were talking about what recurring dreams are and i was born breech with the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck and mm -hmm. they thought i was dead when i was born mm -hmm. i was blue and all these things and then I was in this class and they were talking about people that are born breech with the umbilical cord have the same type of recurring dream. And that was the first time I was like, that's fascinating. There's a study on, and the dream for me, and this was, 
this would happen on a regular basis. And interesting, I was looking for the book and I have it somewhere in here. The book, The Prophet by Kab uh, Kabil, Kabil, or I don't know how to say his name, but the, the book, The Prophet. Yeah, The Prophet, everybody knows what The Prophet, yeah, yeah. So the cover of that book scared me for a long time, even up until a few years ago, because the face on that book was the face in my dream. And the dream okay. was this emotionless figure on this plane of sand, and I couldn't move but he didn't move, but he came closer. So he wasn't moving, but he was coming closer and I couldn't move. And it just caused massive anxiety. And then come to find out years later that that is from that birthing trauma where I felt suffocated. I couldn't breathe. And I'm like, that's so fascinating. That imprint on my soul was still processing through my sleep. Mm. Yes, through your sleep, because it is allowed Yes. You are allowing it to come forth because there is no barrier. There is no, no limitations. This is how we heal, I think. If we are more, <laughs> this sounds funny, but if we are more awake to our dreams, mm -hmm. there is healing in the dreams. Yes. You know, I had reoccurring dreams now that you mention it. When I was a little girl, I think I was around six or seven years old. And this is the time where my parents picked me up uh, after leaving me when I was four months old with my aunt and then they picked me up when I was six years old and brought me here and I felt like an alien in my own home because I didn't know my mother and I didn't know my father and yet I was sleeping there in their home and you know when you sleep you're well you're defenseless and I was one thing I couldn't go to sleep it took me very very long time to go to sleep and then every time I fell asleep I started dreaming the same dream and there it, it's actually two dreams. One dream is where I, I dream that I'm put in a box and then there's a lid and the lid falls over the box like this and closes me in. So I can't see the sky. I can't see the stars. And this woke me up every single time I woke up every single time. So when I tried to sleep, go to sleep, I woke up with this dream. Or I had this where I maybe slept a little bit longer. I could dream that I was um, in a bed and the bed was balancing on a rope in the universe, you know, like in, the, in space. There was nothing underneath and nothing above. And I was balancing this bed. And every time I, I became aware that the bed was balancing on this rope, I woke up because I felt like I was going to fall out of the bed, you know, like an astronaut hanging in the space with no one there, drifting. That's how I felt, rootless, drifting. And this, it was a reoccurring dream over and over and over. I think I, the last time I dreamt it was actually when I was about 19 and I was supposed to move away from my parents' home. That's the last time I dreamt this dream. What a fascinating dream because especially yeah. the dynamics in your house where you yes. have just he and any mm -hmm. could throw all the dynamics off and here yes sleep trying to not move not not be <laughs> don't be exactly you, you can be here but just don't be okay <laughs> true <laughs> yeah, true right. yes wow. it's about being it's about roots being rootless even though you're with your parents i i mean i i felt rootless that's how it felt and this is what my subconscious mind was showing me this is your state of being this is your state of mind this is what where you're swimming so to speak as a child you can't change this but now when i look back on these dreams it's about overcoming yes. uh, the the box dream was about overcoming the fear of being trapped because i felt like i was trapped i couldn't I couldn't leave. This was a new country for me. I couldn't, I didn't know the language and I was six years old. So, I mean, I was trapped in that box and I was so afraid that the lid would fall on me so that I will never leave the box. So this is what I mean when I say that the higher self is communicating with you. It is telling you, yes, I see this. I can see that you're afraid of this, but it won't happen. So in a sense, our dreams are creating a safe space for us to explore our fears. So, I mean, I wish we knew more about dreams. I really do. I wish that we knew more about um, 
this communication going back and forth and how to interpret it, it's so hard to generalize, you know, to say like, well, if you dream about that, that's about this. Yes. It's not that way. It, it's about what you, the meaning you give to the things that you have in your dream and what they mean to you. So it's a, it's a inner process. You can ask others, but still it's your interpretation of it because it is your higher self communicating to you with your language and it's unique for you. Yes, that's great. It's interesting. I've had, um, I've interviewed a few people on my podcast, uh, two in particular, one can lucid dream and they were telling me out, off podcast how to practice lucid dreaming. And, and I, I attempted it for maybe like five nights and then I, I, was waking up the next morning and like, oh, I didn't have any lucid dreams. But that's a fascinating concept to be awake while dreaming and then mm -hmm. to be conscious in the sleep to to navigate these dreams and talk. Mm -hmm. That's a fascinating concept. And this person, and I've seen other people and I've been following them and they talk about lucid dreaming. The other mm -hmm. person that I had on um, talked about astral projection but he didn't mean to one night he was sleeping and the next minute he knows he's floating above his house. He can see the city and he mm -hmm. knows his body's in his bed, but he mm -hmm. started looking around and he could travel the city. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. once he felt like he went too far, he snapped back in his body. And that mm -hmm. he said, after that, he had days of just downloads of information. He couldn't stop receiving mm -hmm. like all this information and like that is so fascinating as well. This astral projection in sleep and then the lucid dreams, both people mm -hmm. come back with all this amazing information. It's fascinating. You know, I, I've had that kind of an experience when I was, I think I was between 11 and 12 years old. This is amazing what we go through when we are in that age between 10 and 12. There, there is something highly spiritual going on, except that we're, ne we're not talking about this in our society. But I know as a child that I had a lot of experiences during that period of time that was highly illuminating, that gave me a lot of information about this reality. I just didn't understand what to do with it at that time. Mm. I remember the night where I had an experience like this. I didn't know it was astral projection at that time. I was simply laying in my bed and I was breathing in and out, oxygenating my body without knowing why I did it because I felt a tingling feeling in my hands and toes and I liked it. And suddenly I felt like my body became formless, like a potato or something, or I felt like I only had a head and no body. And that's when I started realizing that I wasn't in my body anymore. I could see myself floating above myself the funny thing is that i had my night gown gown on and it was as blue as this shirt and i'm looking at it and thinking wow i'm wearing this because i knew that i wasn't in my body i knew that my body was lying on the bed there but yet i had it was an image of me of my physical self in an altered state wow. and then i just took off so I went to the window and in a horizontal plane, I went through a very, very narrow little opening in the window. And while going there, I was looking into the little uh, place, you know, where the window is, the, the lock of the window. And I was thinking, wow, so much dust in there. And then I went out through the window, hovered over our, a tree outside of my window, and looking over to the other side where my one of my friends was living and her mother was making something in the kitchen and I could see her over there and I was thinking, should I go there and knock on the window? No, I shouldn't. Maybe I'll scare her. And then I just stayed hovering over this tree, feeling the energy of the tree and feeling the, 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 the leaves. And it was intense because it was almost like the tree was whispering to me. And I was hovering there and thinking, this is cool. Now I have to go back. So I went back into my body. And before all of this happened, it started off with a tingling feeling in my neck. That's how I knew that I was kind of um, being, um, being pulled out of my body in a way, the tingling 
was a key that I wasn't in my body anymore. This was a, a fascinating experience, which I didn't try any more times after that, but I remember it vividly. And it wasn't a dream. It was very, very vivid. Just that I was in my bed. And if somebody would have walked into the room, they would say, oh, Gordana is sleeping. And I wasn't. I was hovering over the tree outside of my window. <laughs> So it's really fascinating what we can do with our minds. And yet we're kind of not inspired to try these things. Well, our society doesn't. Yeah. Well, not to cut you off. I'm sorry. To, it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Perhaps, why? Because I'm, I'm listening to that. That is such a beautiful awareness, which helps you broaden your awareness, helped you broaden your awareness to who you are today. And, being mm -hmm. a spiritual teacher but then what's the opposite of a good dream it's the nightmare and what yes. is constantly pumped into children's experience is perhaps intentionally images and frequencies and and communications that can deviate our youth when we're young to mm -hmm. be afraid of dreams. So we stop going into our dreams in mm -hmm. love and we go into dreams in fear and then we don't want to dream anymore. It becomes a terrible mm -hmm. place to be. And mm -hmm. then people grow up as adults and they're shut down to spiritual, the spiritual truths all around them because at some mm -hmm. point they were traumatized from that spiritual reality that they experienced mm -hmm. in their dream. That, mm -hmm. That's a fascinating concept yeah, I, to explore. Yeah. I think, I think that the nightmares, we are so afraid of the nightmares, but the way I see nightmares is that it's actually, it is, a nightmare is telling you what you need to take care of during the daytime. It is showing you that you have too much of the fear frequency within you. You know how your dream about the wolf, for instance, it oh, yeah. changed. Yeah, and you will have to tell that dream yeah. <laughs> for yourself. But this, this could have turned into a nightmare because there was fear. But when you know how to use it in your dreams, you also know how to get rid of the fear. It is showing you what you need to work with. It's mm. not, you're not supposed to run away from it. You're supposed to look at it and ask yourself why am i dreaming this it's about incorporating it into your reality and telling asking yourself why am i dreaming this because every character in your dream is is a version of yourself mm -hmm. it is showing you things that you don't want to look at when it comes to yourself during your awake time so every character in your dream is connected to you and speaks volume about you, what you need to do with yourself. It shows you the shadows and everything without the veil between, in between. So it, it's a way to work with yourself in a safe space because you can't die in a dream. So you can try whatever. It's right. just that imagination is so vivid while we dream that it seems like real right. in the dream, so to speak. Well, it's it's fascinating. And John Durante said, what do you think about waking up at 3 a.m. to 5 a.m.? And mm -hmm. John, for years, I would wake up at 3 a.m. In fact, the first night I slept through the night in more than a decade was the night I finally hit rock bottom and I started unpacking all this stuff. But there is some energetic field. I was reading this book, Get Off Your Acid, um, about being alkaline in your body versus an acidic body. And acid mm -hmm. is the highest in the body at 2 a.m and there's mm -hmm. a lot of if there's a lot of energies that swirl around because they know that they being if you want to manipulate those energies or you want to manipulate bodies or if you want to send energies or you want to play with this world you know that the body's in a vulnerable state at two which then leads to this awakening and people waking up so that might be part of it but listening to you're right the the nightmare tells, shows you what must be faced and conquered, what must be overcome or what must be, mm -hmm. and you're right, you can't be killed. I had this dream. I've always been hunted in my dreams. Mm -hmm. And this other recurring dream I had besides this 
faceless figure moving towards me and I can't move. And it just caused a sense of dread, like a pit in my stomach mm -hmm. was my mom and brother. I'm bringing them with me and I'm a kid and we are being chased by men mm -hmm. that are going to kill us. And I'm this, this dream happened minimum 10 times in my life and they were chasing me. And all there was were rows of cages mm -hmm. with bars. So there was nowhere to hide except you could get in a cage. But if you got in a cage, there's not, they could see you. There it is. And mm -hmm. that's what happened. Every time I would bring them in this cage and we would hide mm -hmm. and here comes the men and they would find us every time. Mm -hmm. And this leads to the wolf dream that we're talking about where I've mm -hmm. always been hunted or I always mm -hmm. was in that victim mindset of someone's going to get me. Someone's coming to hurt me. Someone's going to hurt others. We got to mm -hmm. hide. We got to run, but I can't run. I can't move. I'm trapped until December of 2019. And it always led to people pleasing because I didn't want to hurt people. I want these hands heal. They do not hurt. And that's one of the things that I have learned through my healing journey is I have the same power to inflict pain upon another, but I've never chosen to inflict pain upon another because I want my hands to heal. And this, and so I've been a prolific people pleaser and I've had this, I had that image and I talked about it, um, lot, I think last week where I was a golden retriever and I'm getting on my belly or getting on my back and exposing my belly to all these dogs that would constantly bite me. And then I would look at them like, I, I'm not trying to hurt you. What are you doing? So I would get lower into the ground and say, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to hurt you. And they would bite me even, even more. And this had been just the recurring theme of my life. People pleasing. Don't say what you want. Don't cause a scene because if you cause a scene, mm -hmm. pain will be inflicted upon myself and upon others. And I was dealing with something at the time where there were some people in my life professionally that I wasn't happy with what they were doing, but it wasn't speaking up mm -hmm. until this dream happened. And the dream was that I go up this mountain and it feels like it's in Arizona or something. It's very arid and dry mountain. And I'm climbing up this mountain with people I don't know that well. They go left and I look right. And as I look right, I feel this sense of something waiting for me something's calling me and it is so visceral so vivid i could be in it right now <laughs> that's how real the dream was and there was this giant rock about 20 feet in front of me the size of a car and i knew something was hiding behind that rock waiting for me so i grabbed a stick and i bang it on the ground <laughs> like i've had enough like <laughs> come and get me i bang it on the ground immediately oh, a giant wolf the size of that boulder comes out and dead sprints at me viciously like looking at me and jumps up on me and I grab this wolf and it's like violently biting and it's tearing my flesh and I'm looking at it tear my arm my left arm and I can see my exposed flesh but I'm not bleeding and that was one of the things that I was aware that it was tearing me but I wasn't bleeding and it was like bah, bah, bah. and my thought was do I kill this am I afraid of this wolf what do I do with this wolf? What is happening? I had all these thoughts and I thought of the Bible talks about King David killed a wolf. And I'm like, do I kill this wolf? It was a fascinating concept. So I'm holding this wolf and I'm squeezing it and I wake up at 3.13 in the morning. So John, this happened at 3.13 <laughs> in the morning. I wake up and I'm hold my arms are like this in bed. And I felt like the wolf was still there. It was so bizarre. And I get up out of bed like this, like I'm holding this wolf. And I go downstairs. And for two hours, I processed, what does this mean? What just happened? And then you and I had our call the next day. <laughs> you know, and we talked about all this stuff. And I'm really big into to totem medicine. Like, when these animals show up, I've learned, I've become big into that. When the animal shows up, it is a me direct message. And that the totem has different animals because an animal can morph to teach a different lesson. So that, that spirit or that soul can morph so it become a bear to teach, a wolf mm -hmm. to teach, an owl to teach. Mm -hmm. So today or that night, the wolf showed up. And... I realized that I had been hunted my whole life and I was afraid of being hunted. And the wolf was actually me. I was the wolf, but the wolf was trying to wake me up. Like, finally bring me into you. You are, a wolf. I'm a big 
man, I'm 6'3", 240. Like, I am not a small victim anymore. I've done all the work. I'm not afraid to speak. And finally, this last second, this wolf had to be incorporated inside me where I became the wolf. I am the wolf. And I'm no longer a victim. And this dream forever changed my life. And I have spoken directly to every person <laughs> since that day. I was like, nope, here's the boundary. Here's you know what we're going to do. Here's what success looks like to work together. And it radically changed my life. It's about incorporating something that uh, can almost feel like deadly fear. You incorporated the fear when you realize that it was a part of you and you can use it, not being used by it, being hunted all your life. And it is your father hunting you and the cages and all that, the responsibility for others and yet not being able to protect them. This wolf showed you that you can protect them. You are the wolf. There is nothing hunting you anymore. So that, that was the dream. And of course it changes you. It cha changes you on a deep, deep level because you understand who you are. It gives you, this is the higher self really talking to you. But if you wouldn't go deep enough, you would say, oh my God, I had such a terrifying dream. I'm afraid of wolves. And then you stay there. You know, you don't go, you don't push it all the way. You just stay there and then the fear stays. It doesn't change you. I mean, this is why it's almost like your higher self wants you to, wants to awaken you in your dream to realize who you are, to scare you into this so that you will feel the fear and yet survive it. It's a way to go through the fear when you have a dream like that. So it is life changing to have a dream like that, but it also takes some consideration some some analyzing and some incorporating into your soul what it is that you have had given to you by the highest self oh uh, that, sure. so i had this yes mission um by my beautiful friend that I grew up with and she's an incredible artist and she mm -hmm. painted this that here is the hunter who's always hunting me this gun there's a wolf print mm -hmm. right here and mm -hmm. i was always hiding Mm -hmm. And then the wolf comes out and he, then I eventually incorporated the wolf that I am the wolf here. Yes. And, and then you and I talked about the moon. So I had shared with her about the moon and what does a wolf mm -hmm. do? A wolf goes into the dead of night and howls, howling. Howls. And when a wolf howls, everyone wakes up. No one's like, oh, that's nice. You're like, your <laughs> senses, you get the tingle and yeah. And I've always felt like I'm here for helping people awaken. And it's interesting you're saying that mm -hmm. fear pr prompts, a, it really prompts us to choose. Like you have mm -hmm. to go through like that. There's no more gray area. That will force me to either, I was going to live in mm -hmm. fear the rest of my life, or I was going to finally conquer that, incorporate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was interest. That was an interesting precipice that it brought me to. Mm -hmm. It's about really... Um, embra embracing your fear because you, as you say, you embraced the wolf, you held the wolf. It couldn't go anywhere. You held the wolf. So it became a part of you. And I think that this is actually what dreams are supposed to do with us. It is therapy in a way. But if you're constantly having nightmares, because there are a lot of people, they write to me and say, what am I supposed to do? I'm always having nightmares. I, I have no other dreams. I'm only having nightmares. Well, this is a signal that you are in a fearful mode during the day, most of the day. And this is your soul telling you you're deviating from who you are. You need to look at this. Don't be afraid. Look at it. Stay there. Go through it. And you'll see there is no real danger here. It is showing you what you need to work with. I had another, my dream, the one that changed my life in a profound way was not at all scary or, or it was a little bit scary, but not in the same way as your wolf. This was about the time when my husband wanted us to start thinking about having children. And since I, well, as you know, I didn't have a great childhood. When I was 16, my mother gave birth to a little boy and she went to work immediately. So I had to take care of him, which 
of course, it was a little boy and I, I, I love my brother, so it wasn't about that, but I was only 16 and it wasn't my job to take care of a child day in and day out during the night. And he was crying all the time and I, 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 it was really stressful for me. I felt trapped in this and I felt that I, I had no life of my own. So somewhere in my subconscious mind, I put an equal mark between children having a child and being trapped. That was the story that I told myself unconsciously. So when my husband started to talk about having children, and I was 29 at the time, or maybe even more, I was closing in on 30. And he said, well, you know, we actually, I would love to have a child. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like this trying to yeah. kind of surf my way around it. And then one night, I had this profound dream where I found myself on a plateau on a mountain. I was standing very, very close to the edge and I could see the abyss straight in front of me. And I could sense that there was a being standing on my left side. Mm. And I could sense that this being was very, very tall. I mean, very tall and looking like the reaper, death, you know, with a hood on. I couldn't see the face. I could just see the dark being standing there. And this scared me a lot. And this being just put it, its hand on my back and pushed me over the edge. And I fell. Now, I am afraid of heights, or I was afraid of heights at that time. So I thought, I'm going to die. This creature pushed me, and I'm going to die, and I'm falling, and I feel the air, and the pressure, and everything, and my heart almost stops, because I know that I'm going to die, and the second before I hit the ground, I find myself on the plateau again in my dream. This time, I'm walking to towards the, the edge, and when I get to the edge, I stand there, and I just go, look at the being, and the being just puts its hand on my back and communicates with me in a in a wordless way that it's okay you can jump and i look and then he just pushes me a little bit not as hard as the first time just a little push like that mm -hmm. and i'm falling but this time i'm not just falling i'm actually enjoying it i'm looking around trying to see how does this look how does this feel i feel that i can trust that i won't die so i'm falling and yet almost flying before I hit the ground a third time, I'm up on the plateau again. And this time I am running. I, I am really running through the plateau like this to the edge, looking at the being and then jumping off myself and flying. It's like free flying, free falling. And I can, I can control everything. And I feel so free. I've never felt so free in my life. And in the morning when I wake up, I knew that this was, th that I had a flawed belief system when it comes to children, that mm -hmm. that was not my child, it was my brother, and it's different. If I have my own child, I will feel different. And then two days later, I have a dream where I dream about my son. I, I'm, I'm not pregnant or anything, but I dream about holding him in my hands. I look at him and he smiles and I feel utter love for this little being. And I wake up and I am crying because I know that it was a dream and I won't meet him because I, I felt this unconditional love to this child in my dream, but it was just a dream. And that's when I made up my mind that I'm going to have this child either way. And it was one of the best decisions in my life. I mean, I could have said no to this and not had any children, but this was the best thing I've ever done because it changed everything for me. It made me more authentic, literally changed my life. And it was just this dream, profound dream for me. It's interesting to, if we see the universe, if we see God as benevolent, that everything is happening for us, then even mm -hmm. the fear happens yes. for us. Yes. But if we choose to see the universe and God as happening to us, you mm -hmm. could have easily in that dream, perhaps maybe chosen 
to reject that being and fought that, yes. which would have led to a different outcome, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think, you know, we can keep fighting this. We can be in the victim mindset until we finally just mm -hmm. surrender, like you in that dream surrendered where you're having fun. Like, mm. yeah, I feel you, you are very, very close to the truth here because it's about the surrender. Sometimes we need to be so scared that we see no options but to surrender to it, right. like you and the wolf. Yes. There, there were no options for you. You had to go through that fear. Yes. That's the only option, which means that you have to surrender to what is in front of you. And it is a dra dream state, but since everything is energy and we're creating this reality through our minds, then this is an altered reality, which we can use as a tool in order to set ourselves free from the subconscious weight that we have mm. because the subconscious mind is always present in our dreams so it means what if you don't know what to do you will be told in a dream if you ask for it yes yes it's about the ima imagination because the dreaming is it is closely connected to imagination it is using your imagination to show you images of who you are hmm. so without, it's the same thing yeah go ahead the ego the ego yes perhaps is the the filter for it uh, the day the awake yes yes and the dreams it are the i don't know what the container is but yeah there's no ego in sleep mm -hmm. so exactly we can, we can communicate more deeper truths in that yeah or receive deeper truths Yes, I think that maybe the nightmares are actually showing us that we are too much in ego during mm -hmm. the day. That, and that's where the limitations are and, and how to get free from the limitations. I mean, the, the altered states of mind is always tapped into our imagination. You have had your ayahuasca experience. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done that, but I, I do have vivid imagination when it comes to guided visualizations. I, it almost feels like lucid dreaming for me. And there is so much information embedded in this. When I know that I am using my imagination and that I am in a relaxed state of being where I allow things to happen because it's a safe space. Yes. Yes. I think that the key here is to understand that the dream state is a safe space to yes. work on yourself. Yes, yes. But your ayahuasca thing is really a, a, also a reality altering for you, it was. <laughs> uh, it was what that medicine it's the same thing as sleep because it drops the ego so i didn't have an yes. ego i was safe i was completely safe and i processed the darkest stuff that i've experienced and i had no trigger i just looked at it and i was able to heal that like i was able to see oh this person is just a sick person and a sick mm -hmm. person operates from sickness you're talking so about your father me. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and Another moment, I was taken up into outer space and I saw the earth. And this was such a beautiful moment for me because leaving religion in that such dogmatic, extreme, mm -hmm. performance-based <laughs> world, I was brought up into space and I was right next to God. And my God, I, like God and I were right there with each other. And I see planet Earth rotating ever so slowly, and the sunlight is hitting North America. And it just, it, it's so beautiful. It's such a vivid, and you know, there's a, in the United States, there's this bumper sticker, it says coexist, and it has all the different symbols of all the religions of the world mm -hmm. on the sticker. Mm -hmm. And embossed the size of North America, across north america were gold the gold embossed logos or symbols of all the religions like the coexist mm -hmm. sticker and so the mm -hmm. earth is rotating the sun's hitting it and i see it being illuminated and i heard god say oh how cute 
my people are trying to connect with me. And I was mm. like, I mean, I have chills right now. I could cry. It is such a beautiful, it just showed me what do we know? We are all trying to profess mm -hmm. the truth of all things. And here from that perspective, it was like, everyone is just doing their best. Everyone's try, trying to, it was just such a beautiful experience. And it, it felt like a dream, but it was real. I was conscious, mm. but I was also not, I mean, I was conscious, but I was in this other altered state and it was, yeah. it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It showed me that God is unconditional love, period. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no conditions in that. It was just, I felt mm -hmm. this like, oh, how cute. And that word cute. I'm like, God says the word cute. I remember coming back like, oh, that's an <laughs> interesting word to say. But yeah. it was like such um, like when I see a little child, like, oh, you're so cute. I just went, that's mm -hmm. how it felt. It was like, oh, how cute. Mm -hmm. My people, my, the humanity is trying to connect mm -hmm. with me. Ah. This is, this is beautiful when you can reach a state in your altered state where you understand oneness. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that the most profound visualizations or altered states of being is when you can reach that point where you can feel it. You're not, you're not being told, you feel what it means. Yes. I had a visualization once which can be equal to a dream because I was in a deep relaxed state. And this visualization was about mm, sitting on a beach in the evening, looking at the stars above with a breeze. And I could, I have this vivid imag imagination. So I could feel everything, even the breeze in my, in my visualization that day. And I was supposed to write the first word that comes to my mind in the sand where I was. Now, there's a story behind this because I was afraid of black water, big black waters. I could, if we were on a ship, I could not go outside if it was night because I can't see the horizon, which means that I, it's almost like the dream when I'm a little and hanging in my bed, there is no up and no down. So it reminded me of being drowned in this darkness and I couldn't do it so in this visualization I was laying there and it was cool and nice and the breeze and everything and I was going to write something in the sand because that was the assignment to do and I sit up put my hand in the sand and instead of writing I put all my fingers in the sand and then I start making waves mm -hmm. with my hand like this and the sea because this is on a beach and it's night. So the sea is dark and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, oh my God, this sea is dark. And it reaches out and fills in where I make the waves. It comes and meets my hand. And I feel, I hold my hand out there and the dark sea and my hand is one. And I, I think, oh my God, I'm one with the sea. And I'm connected to the sea and thinking, I am one with this sea. Yeah. And this was a real fear. And I'm one with it. And it feels good. It's okay. So I didn't write anything. I just drew a wave formation like this. And the sea came to me. Profound. And I felt the oneness. So mm. this is what we're supposed to do with our imagination. This is how we're supposed to use it, allow ourselves to become in this, to be in this altered state and allow things to come to us because there it, it's full with information about who we are and what we need to work on. Mm. That gives me chills. You're there in the Shema in, in Judaism, it's hero Israel, the Lord, our God is one. Mm -hmm. And it in Lord means love supreme. So love in love, everything is one and mm -hmm. that truth exists whether we acknowledge it or not we're all one it's all one but when we come in that place of love we can feel it and when we can feel it that changes everything i was with um a friend of mine and his wife they invited me in their house i dropped some stuff off yesterday beautiful beautiful black brother he's a, such a beautiful soul and i was talking about from that African-American perspective of 2020 and 
in 2021 and I and I talked about the human race. I'm like, we are such I said we when we choose to be the healers, the most victimized groups could be the most prolific healer if we choose to just bring us all together in this one. And it, it was just such a powerful moment to say the division is the illusion. It yes. is the illusion. We are mm -hmm. one. When I hurt, you hurt. You just don't know it because I haven't told you my hurt yet, but there's yes. a rising tide lifts all ships. Love, when we come into that, we realize that we're all one mm -hmm. and that we, when we operate from love, and I think our dreams show us where we are missing in the day mm. coming back into that love. Yes, yes. I think the key is, and you mentioned it earlier, that when we're in a dream state, uh, we are not as much in our ego because mm. ego is the thing that creates the illusions of boundaries. Yes. You and I are one and the same it's the same life force going through me and through you. The yes. ego creates this personality and it's fun as long as it's based in love. But yes. when we start seeing the differences as danger, that's when we start hurting on the inside. And that's where the nightmares come in because they tell you, you are too much in your ego mind. You have to sink down or actually <laughs> elevate up in your frequency yeah. so that you will reach your heart. You need to be in your heart space. And this is what, for me, in this, this vivid visualization where I'm afraid of the sea and it, it touches my hand to show me that I am. there is no fear. There is only love here. You're the one creating the fear within you because your ego tells you this. And this is what I mean when we are awake in our dreams, we understand that everything that comes to you comes with love. You're the one that needs to process it, to allow it to go through you, yes. to see that there is no danger in this. Yes, that's the alchemy. I, that's where we can alchemize anything, everything yes, into love. Yes. yes, and it will also show you what you need to work on. I had another of these visualizations where we were going to... Um, this visualization was about going out to a meadow and imagining a house standing there and then walking slowly to the house and being aware of what's happening with the house as you come closer and closer. And my first image of the house was a very, very small wooden house with fragile doors and fragile windows and everything. And the closer I came to the house, the more solid it became. It was built by rock and stone house. The door was beautiful with golden knob on it as I was opening the door. And when I walk into the house, this is a palace. This is not a little wooden house. It is a palace and where I walk in, it's a library and a living room at the same time. And I'm in this library and there's so many books, so much knowledge in this house. And I'm sitting there and thinking, oh, I can stay here forever. And then when I went out of this visualization, and this was maybe 25 years ago, I realized that the house was me. And the wow. way I perceived the house on the outside was what I think that people see when they look at me. So it's a fragile little house with small fragile doors and windows. But what I know on the inside, when I walk in, inside of this house, it's full of books and knowledge and I love being there. This is my mind and my heart space where I am. And I loved it because it gave me information, true information about who I am. If I'm willing to interpret it, if I'm willing to look at it, if I'm willing to relabel stuff, I will know lots about myself and it's always beneficial. It's never um, not good for you to know what it is. That's beautiful. I think we're, we're coming into this place right now where people are, Lauren and I were talking last night about politics, uh, spirituality, money, and all these forms and more than spirituality, religion, religion, spirituality, and, and, um, politics, religion, and, uh, money, all these different modalities that people can go down and feel connected to. And we've been so long focused outward 
on where we fit in with others, where we fit in with groups, where we can align politically, where, but we are discovering right now the the beauty is going within like you're the, yes. that house i can picture like mm -hmm. and then once we finally go within and love every part of and explore the vastness of what is within us then when we come to another or come to a group or sit with other perspectives we are no longer in victim it's like let us create together let us break bread together. Let me hear your experience. And we can, we can draw from each other's wells deeply when we wake up to what's within, as opposed to always feeling like there's a lack and I need something. Mm -hmm. Who, what do you have that I need versus mm -hmm. I have everything already that I need. I am all that I am. Yes. And there is nothing less and I can mm -hmm. share with you and you are all that you are. And I, Oh, it's just mm -hmm. such a beautiful concept of yeah. humanity's awakening right now. This, yeah, it's about the willingness to explore all that is within yourself. Yes. But, and I think a lot of people are maybe confused because they go to bed, they don't think about dreaming, they go to bed, they're so tired, they try to read but fall asleep and then they sleep like a log all night and then wake up in the morning and feeling not refreshed actually like running a marathon more tired than they were when they went to bed and it's all about the mindset when you go to bed you can actually ask to be guided in your dreams you could say i would like to remember my dreams and i would like the dreams to give me information of what i need to know with an intention when you go to bed mm -hmm. that you want to remember your dreams and that you actually want to explore them during the night. Also going to bed with a mindset um, that is not cleared from the negativity will keep you in a too low frequency during the night. So you might not even dream, you might just sleep in that low frequency, which will not allow yourselves to regenerate. And that's why you feel tired when you wake up in the morning. So. I think being more intentional when we go to bed to say, okay, so I need to focus on elevating my frequency before I go to bed. Maybe think about something that you're going to do in the morning that you like or gratitude for what has been during the day. Gratitude will always bring you to the right frequency and to fall asleep in gratitude. This is also why we shouldn't fall asleep if we're angry at our partner try to solve everything before you close your eyes, because the minute you close your eyes, there's a snapshot of your frequency. And that is the frequency that you will be in for the six or eight hours you sleep. Mm -hmm. Why not be in a, the ultimate frequency of gratitude, compassion, and love before you go to sleep? And that's how you bring in the dreams that you need in order to See it as school during the night, <laughs> Te like teachings of who you are and, and what you're here and what you're missing, what you need to, to focus on, what you need to resolve. It comes to you in dreams. That is how your soul speaks to you through your yes. dreams yes. and being open to that, saying to your soul, I am open. Hmm. Help me during the night to see who I am and what I need to work on. And then even if it is a nightmare, then you know that, okay, so I'm in too much of too low frequencies. I'm too much in my ego during the day. How can I change this? Mm. So the real world and the dream world are actually very connected to each other. And the connection is you. It is your subconscious mind. That is where the connection is. There is no real boundary between them. Right. Fascinating. I've been saying this every morning for the past three years minimum. In Judaism, the very first prayer upon waking is the Moedani, which says, I thank you, O living and eternal king, for returning my soul within me with compassion mm. and loving kindness. Mm. And that is, I, wait, I do not get out of bed until I say that. I wake up and I thank God. And I don't say those exact words. I just say, thank you, God, for returning my soul within me. Thank you. And I go through my list of gratitudes. And mm -hmm. I cannot tell you how drastically my frequency has just been so high ever since and mm -hmm. not 
I mean, I've had some days where I have to deal with some lower energies and wondering what's happening, but just being it's sleep is bizarre, right? I mean, mm. we close our eyes and we're in our most vulnerable state. Where are we? Our body's there, but we're mm. all over the place. And then we wake mm. up like, no big deal. I checked out. <laughs> My body is doing this thing and we are somewhere yeah. else. And then we wake up and we take for granted that we wake up. And I think that's mm. it, to me why it changed it elevated me so high is being gra- grateful just to be conscious that I didn't mm-hmm. just, some people go to sleep and never wake up again. You know, the, oh, mm-hmm. they died in their sleep. That's that's a common mm-hmm. thing. That's how some people choose to go out and their souls Absolutely. never return. Yeah. They stay in the yeah. dream state forever. Yeah. And yeah. it's such a gift to wake up from that personal school of the night in our sleep mm-hmm. and take what we Absolutely. learned. Yeah, absolutely. This is, it is crucial to understand the connection between the real world, in quotation marks, and the dream world, just to understand the connection and that it is going through you. Mm. I had an interesting conversation with my son's girlfriend the other, other day. She's such a highly intelligent, spiritual being, a beautiful girl. And I was talking about me waking up in the morning in the middle of a negative thought and i'm thinking who's doing the thinking i'm sleeping and yet i'm waking up with this negative thought where does it come from and she actually gave me an idea about this which i have never ever thought about she says that well in order for you to wake up your body sends out adrenaline so that you will be able to wake up and your brain will interpret the adrenaline as danger and that's why you wake up with a thought that might try to make sense of why am I feeling danger here? So the first thing, it will pick up on something that that you have been worrying about or something that you have been thinking about that is negative. And you will think that, okay, so this is what I need to do. This is where, when you wake up, you need to say, nope, not that thought. I want this thought instead. So that you put push yourself in the right frequency because this is you didn't choose this your body chose it for you but you're the master of your body so you need to say to your body okay i hear you and i'm up so now we're shifting (laughs) new frequency (laughs) i'm shifting yes that's so good just just a tip (laughs) this is Hmm. It's so beautiful to talk about dream. I'm so glad we're having this conversation because I've Mm -hmm. never heard anyone else. I've heard people talk about dreams from what do dreams mean and interpretation of Mm -hmm. dreams, but never just the fact that dreams are just like, they're just part of us. They are us. Mm -hmm. We get to explore more and there's, uh, there's facets of dream life that teach us during the day you know Mm. what how to live more how to be more how to Mm. your dream made you more you my dream made me more me. you going off the cliff and me incorporating the wolf inside me all these things yes what a bizarre thing i had a dream that i got pushed off a cliff by a uh the grim reaper but it was the greatest thing ever i had a dream (laughs) that a wolf was biting my flesh and i brought it into me and incorporated but it was incredible i mean these things are so wild and yet so beautiful and the uniqueness of the dream is so beautiful and so i'm so glad we had this conversation because it reminds me i get to have more fun in my dreams and that's yes that's really beautiful very much so i'd love to have another one we'll we'll have to figure out how to speak about more dreams i think maybe we could look at different types of dreams because there are different types of dreams there's lucid dreaming there's deep dreaming there's there are so many different types i mean i had an aha moment when many years ago i started reading about this and i was thinking oh my god i'm seeing dreaming as one thing dreaming is not one thing there are so many layers to this and has anyone categorized them so it would be nice to dive deep and see if we can, we, we can see what kind of different types of dreams are we dreaming and what are they about? That would be nice. That would be in a future project. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. For, for another live Sunday, another live Yes, Sunday. absolutely, absolutely. 
Well, this I was love you. This amazingly fun. Thank fun. You. Yes. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. John is on here and who else? Uh, Joel, Joel Lenz, I think. I don't know yes. if I'm mispronouncing your name, sister, but yeah. thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next week. Next Sunday, we'll meet again. Have a beautiful Sunday, everyone. Bye.